hello this is Cindy welcome to my channel and today I am make, mass making some pages that can go into my signatures it would be really nice to be able to just go into my box and pull out things that are pre-made and I've already made a couple with ruffles we're going to make those and then if we have time we're going to make another type as well so let's start with the ruffles and see where we get so for, to use the, the ribbon that I'm using, or that I've used on both of these, this is uh, Member's Mark Premium Ribbon, 50 yards, inch and a half wide, and I got this from Ollie's. Both of these, and this one. So let's open this one up, because I haven't even opened this one yet. This is also a green, but it is a not a teal green it's more of a forest green so this will be nice in a journal of maybe for a, a nature journal I'm gonna put that over there because I will definitely be using that now for these for the short ones I used uh, about 16 inches for the long one I used about 24 I'm gonna go with about a 24 again ish and the, the special thing about this particular ribbon is that it has the wired edge. I am using a wired edge piece. And the reason I'm doing that is so that I don't have to sew. You know me, I, I have a sewing machine recently purchased. Not something I really want to use on these, especially since I already have the wire in it. So I'm just folding it accordion style, folding it front, back and back and back and back, and I'm not really worried if I get them, if I get the spacing the same. Doesn't matter to me. Uh, I am trying to keep it straight because, let's face it, you don't want it curving off to the side. So I am trying to keep it relatively straight, although I'm not too worried about it because I can always adjust it once I get it on the page a little bit if I need to. Like that one's a little off, but I'm not going to worry about it. Not at the moment. Right now, I'm just folding it in an accordion. And like I said, I'm not really worried about whether or not I'm all the same width. No. Height? I guess height. Width would be an inch and a half. And that remains constant. So it is raining here in the Finger Lakes today. It is a very gloomy day. And so that is why I have my light on. Because otherwise you wouldn't see anything. I wouldn't see anything. So I am just flipping this up and flipping it back down. Well, that one's not very level at all. Let's try to level that one out a little bit. There we go. That's a little better. This will be my edging for a page. And I'm going to turn this one to the end up. Now, I've got to the end and I have some extra. If they seem to work out a little bit. I've got just a couple little extra wires. I'm just going to bend those back up. And then I'm bending that up underneath so that it's underneath. Okay, so now I've got my, this is just a coffee dyed piece of paper. Nothing fancy to it. Nothing special. Um, this one I put on the front. This one I put on the inside. Um, this one I put on the inside, so let's put this one on the front. And this is it for Dick Blick, by the way. This is it for my catalog, which is the last time I'm going to be able to use it. It is done. So you can see how that's going to fit. Now, it doesn't quite, I don't have it so that it quite goes all the way up. And I think that that's, prob I'm probably fine with that. I'm just going to come up a little bit here 
and then fold that. There we go. So we got a little bit of a space there, just so I can come make sure it's a little bit longer. Now, like I said, it, it's not exactly level. I'm okay with that. If it bothers you, use a ruler and definitely do it differently. I am going to put my glue right here on the page about how far in I want my ruffle to be. I want it to go in about that far. And then I'm going to take my ruffle and make sure my, my ends that are folded in are on the back. I'm just going to put it down. Pushing that up just a little bit. So I want that at the top. All right. I don't have to sew anything because the wire keeps it in place. I put the page under here because that way if I get any glue on the wrong side, if I move it over or whatever, it just protects things a little bit. Ta-da! It is that simple. Let's do another one. Um, this one is slightly different. I'm, this one, I haven't tried this using using this particular piece yet. I'm trying to find the opening. There has to be an opening here somewhere. Maybe. There it is. So this was, I don't know, I got this at a, I'm going to just cut this one. Um, maybe a thrift store, I think. Or, I don't know, it might have been from the Dollar Tree. Uh, no, not the Dollar Tree. Oh my glory, it's really pouring out there right now. Um, in fact, I'm going to shut my window beside me because it's starting to rain in. So it's probably a lot quieter now. All right, let's make this about, oh, 19 inches or so. A little bit shorter. And you can cut it with whatever scissors you don't mind cutting a little bit of metal with. That's why I'm not using my fabric scissors. So yeah, I th that might have come from the Christmas tree store. That's what I was trying to think of. That might have come from the Christmas tree store. So my ends up here are pretty messy. Again, I'm not too worried about it because it's going to get folded up underneath. But I don't want that extra wire hanging out so that the wire I throw away. I'm going to fold that back and then I'm going to fold up and fold back and fold up and fold back and just zigzag it all the way down so you know it looks like a looks like ribbon candy. It's kind of what we're aiming for. Is a ribbon, maybe that's what I'll call these, ribbon candy ruffle. Because that's really what it looks like when you're all said and done. It looks like ribbon candy. Now this particular piece of coffee dyed paper came out of a coloring book. And I like the maybe Indian style to it. It looks like it should be done in henna. And that's why I'm using the gold, because I think that works nicely with it. Okay, getting a little bit off there, so let's fix me up before I get too far and get too far off. Like I said, if, if you really want everything to be level, there's no reason why you can't get out your measuring tape and measure these all specifically the same uh, height so that they're all level but I like the unevenness of it and what I'm discovering is as I go along it's interesting because now that's still up there and it does, but the wire is missing from the upper upper part now and it's down here on the lower part okay let me cut those off And I'm going to turn that underneath. Now this one's obviously not as long as the other one, but remember it was only 19 inches to start with. And I'm going to, oh my glory, my favorite tack is just 
oozing everywhere. So let me just put a little bit of dab there because I really just want that to hold over. It's really just there to tack it closed so that it doesn't open up on me. So let me do the same up here with my top part. I'm just going to put a little Fabri-Tac in there, clean off my thing a little bit, and mark it closed. There. Now I'm going to add this one a little bit differently. Let me, I'm going to do this one just a little bit differently, just so you can see that there's more than one way to do this. Okay, let me level myself up a little bit, and this time I'm going to, first I'm going to clean off my Fabri-Tac bottle because it's a mess. And I shut that window and now it is very, very stuffy in here. But it was raining in, so don't want it. All right, so this time I still have a little bit of wire hanging out there. Trimming that off because I don't want it. And now I'm going to put it like this. I'm going to, instead of putting my Fabri-Tac on the paper, I'm going to put the Fabri-Tac on my belly, or my, not my belly band, my, you could use these for a belly band, on my ruffle. This is my ruffle. And I just wanted to go over, I'm doing three times up and down, pretty much so I get it centered. And I definitely want it on here. Oh, definitely this way. I'm going to put it right in the middle. There we go. Now, I want that down a little bit more so I can fix it. See? It's one of the nice things about the, the wire is that it's definitely movable for a little while. Okay, I'm going to bring that over just speaking of movable. Let's see if we can't move that paper on it just a little bit more. There we go. Perfect. Isn't that cool? So these are so easy to do. I have one more type. I think, oh no, this doesn't have the, I haven't tried it without the, you know, where it doesn't have the thing in it yet. So I'm not going to. I like the wire. So there I have now five of these that I can use in various journals. Those just look cool. I will be making a bunch more, but for now, let me just kind of close up my pieces here a little bit, because one of the things my mother always taught me in cooking, you always clean up as you go so you don't have a mess when you finish. So I'm just putting away my toys a little bit so that I don't have a mess when I finish. A little bit of scotch tape. Close that right back up. So there we go. We'll put those over there. Now, if you are enjoying these videos, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. Um, say goodbye to Dick Blick. This is the end of that. This is the last of this particular page. I've got a couple of metal filings there. Let me get rid of those. Because the next time now we will be using U-Line. I've taken the cover off of the U-Line. We'll use that up first. And then we'll be using the U-Line catalog. And the U-Line catalog is 847 pages as opposed to 500 pages. So by catalog, you have served me well. Nicely done. All right. Uh, at this point, I am going to stop my video. Um, if I, I'm going to be honest with you, I have a, I actually have four different ways of doing these kinds of of doing pages, of, of mass making pages that can be then put in my stash. Um, I'm stopping my video at this point for two reasons. One, it's gotten very very stuffy in this room with the window closed. Um, and two, when I tried to do all four in one video, 
Oh my glory, I bollocked up my computer like you wouldn't believe. So um, I'm going to do just this one right now. If I can, I will add a second piece onto this. So kind of pay attention to the time below because there may be a second part to this. Uh, if there's not, make sure you're hitting the subscribe button and click the like to let YouTube know that you're liking these videos. All right, for the moment, this is Cindy signing off. Hi, this is Cindy again, and I have my window open. The rain has stopped at least momentarily, so I can get some breeze in here, and we can take a look at another way to build up your stash of pages for your journal. These are just blank coffee dyed pages. I'll set those aside. And I'm going to look, I'm going to show you what we're going to do because like I said, I had made this video before and then my computer bollocks things up. So one of the things that I did was just simply make little collages out of book pages. And I thought that this was a really cool idea and I thought I was, you know, being new at doing this and, and um, was it this really kind of cool? And then I found... Um, on Gail Agustinelli's page, she was doing one and she did them as pockets. So let me see if I can find something here to slide down into that pocket real quick. Um, here we go. Let me just use my little store card. So these are big pockets. And that's a pocket, and that's a pocket, and that's a pocket. The reality is, however, I don't really like them as pockets. Because I, I'm a little worried that that's just not going to be strong enough. I don't know that my paper is strong enough, my, my uh, book page is strong enough to do that with. So what I'm going to continue with is making a bunch of these out of just plain old paper. Plain old book page. So what I'm going to do for this now... I'm going to take a page and I want the, the, the trick is to get three different types of text. I want it to look and I have this one I put on the inside, the other two I put on the outside. That's three completely different kinds of paper. Um, that's actually from uh, Rosencrantz is from Ro um, Hamlet, not Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead, that's from Hamlet. That's from a dictionary, and then that was just a page that I had from something else. So I'm grabbing out three different types of text. This is some German. This is another dictionary page. This is, what else do I have over here? That's, I like the color on that one, but I don't know. I'm looking to see if I... Oh, there we go. There's some nice old dark. That's kind of small. Um, that might be... Too, you could also use music. There's no reason why you can't use music. Let me see if I can find some slightly larger pieces. There we go. There's a nice big piece. That one is... All right. I think we'll go with... Well, we'll pull them both out, and then we'll see where we go from there. All right, so in order to put this together, it's really very, very simple. Um, I don't want the white on there, so I am going to take the white part off. This is from a little bit of Goethe, for those of you who are trying to read the German. This is Goethe in the original. Okay, I guess we'll take that part, since that did not rip quite as I expected it to. These I keep um, because these I will make very, very small pieces, and they will be going and making more paper. Okay, so I have this piece, and I have this piece. Let's take off the top of that and hopefully the side of this. There we go. Same with these, although those I'll keep the numbers off of. I'll take numbers off of that later. And then how about a little bit of, I've got a couple different kinds of dictionary page. 
um, because I have two different dictionaries I'm actually pulling apart at the moment. Which one do you think I should use? Yeah, you're right. I should use this one. Um, and interestingly enough, for those of you who have your mind in the gutter, um, this down here, the word that is at the top of the page, does have a noun definition, and, and uh, the noun definition has nothing to do with female anatomy. Interesting. It's a collegiate dictionary, but it has nothing to do with female anatomy. Okay. So let's go ahead and take the one part of that. I still have metal filings. I'm going to be finding metal filings everywhere for a while. You do know that. Okay. So now I can put these on here really any way that I want. I kind of like it like that. Let's do it like that. And then what's nice about these, now that these will be prepared and ready to go, is that when I go to put it into a journal, all I have to do is maybe add a focal point or maybe do some stamping on the page. I won't have to make the whole page. That's the key with doing these as mass make pieces is that I will be able to simply go to my box and pull out a page. Let me use that card to smooth that out a little bit. And then just add a little bit to it and move on. We won't have to spend all that time organizing and thinking about, okay, what do I wanna put on this page? What do I wanna do here? What do I wanna do there? It will be already done. Okay. I am going to pause my video for a moment because I hear my son out there and I want to talk to him. So I want to catch him before he leaves. Be right back. No, I think I like it. Yeah, I do like it over here. All right. Be right back. Okay. I am back and that's one done two done, three done, four done. Let's do, let's do one or two more just so that I have a nice set of them. Okay, let's take a fairly good size piece here. I want a nice big chunk. Um, we'll put those over there. Let's take a little bit of Goethe and try to be a little bit better with the ripping this time. Maybe we'll just leave that other edge. We can leave him over there. Come on. Everything right now is very, very sticky because it has finished raining, but my glory, the humidity is incredibly high. Benevolent, kind, this says. And I think we'll just put that right down there. So this way, I am going to take a minute this time and edge them. I don't, obviously don't always do that, but I think I want this particular set to be edged. Partly to show that, yes, this is something that you can do with it, but it also gives it a slightly different appearance. So I have another page from Goethe, another page from the dictionary, another part of the dictionary page. This Goethe page is very, very thin. This is, um, you know when you have an academic book? I don't know if you ever took a survey course in college, and it, it's that almost rice paper, thin paper. That's what this paper is, and it's very, very thin. And I'm going to use this whole piece. It says benevolent on it, kindly. 
well-meaning. Okay, so let's go ahead and use our glue stick and attach this one. So this is just another mass media, I mean mass media, mass make of um, making these up. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. That would be the pollen in the air. That has not entirely settled from the rain. A great deal of it has, but not all of it. I don't know how many of you are pollen sufferers. If you are, I empathize. And if you notice, I'm not really worrying too much about where they go. I want Benevola to be on the outside. I want it to be the side we see. There. So there's another one. These are so simple to make and so it, well, first of all, it's a good way of using up your, um, this is from a magazine. It's a great way of using up your pieces of text. It is a great way of getting things organized together so that you don't have to deal with them later. I'm actually going to cut that right there. I'll take the rest of that. We don't need it all. I'm cutting all the edges off now even though I'm going to be cutting it down just to save myself time from doing it later. Okay, so let's get just... This was from the Saturday Evening Post and it was, I don't know, a story that was in the Saturday Evening Post. there. So I have a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And give me my little bit of dictionary page. There we go. Okay, pausing while I do the distressing. Okay, just finishing up this page. Um, I keep pausing because we're having, you know, high conversations here, trying to decide what to do for dinner and who's going to do what and who are we cooking? Are we bake? Are we going out? What are we doing? So at this point, all we've decided is that we're going to go to the grocery store, which is fine. So there's that piece, and here's this piece. Like I said, this came out of a magazine. This was out of the Saturday Evening Post. We have some great articles in there, and this was from a... I don't know what the article was about, but it was about Ibsen. Henrik Ibsen, remember? Those of you who don't know theater don't know Henry Gibson. And I'm not talking about Henry Gibson, which is, again, something that is going to date me. And probably date you if you know who Henry Gibson is. With his great big flower. There. Now there's enough room. If I want to put a little pocket down there, I can do a little pocket. Um, I can stamp on there. I can do just about anything I need to on there. I can just put a great big flower on it. And so now I have a bunch of these pages somewhere. I keep look, picking them up and, and they're the wrong pages. So I have a bunch of these that are on the inside. I have some that are on the outside. I'm going to put the outside ones on top so I don't forget. I have some that are pockets. And I have the ruffles that I made earlier. All of those are going to go 
into my pre-made box of pages so that they can just pull them out and use them as I see fit. All right, if you are enjoying these videos for real this time, please make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the like button to let YouTube know that you're enjoying them. And for real this time, this is actually Cindy signing off.